I rule the world, I will ban processed food or ultra processed food. And you're thinking, why would you want to do that? Because, well, th this is actually spun by an article uh, in Wikipedia and uh, it talks about obesity in Nauru. So it says obesity is a major issue for the Republic of Nauru. Why? According to the World Health Organization, it says that an estimated 94.5% of the people there are overweight or obese, with an obesity rate of 71.7%. And you're thinking, wow, that is a lot of obese people. And apparently, it never used to be like that. So, what did they blame? They blame processed food for that. Okay, now you're thinking, yeah, you can blame processed food, but apparently it's a little bit more complex than that. And this started about 40 years ago, apparently in the 80s. The people from uh, the uh, Nauru or Nauruans, as they're called, uh, started to lead a more sedentary lifestyle with unhealthy uh, diets, contributing to the worst health conditions in the Pacific region. So, it's like a combination of because sometimes I think uh, a lot of people tend to th uh, want to simplify a problem, a complex problem that you're fat because you eat processed food and that's it. But here they said, first of all, you have uh, uh, a more sedentary lifestyle. So is either people become a bit more wealthy or they have a bit more means or the the work they used to do uh, similar to what uh people back in the in the days in the US apparently where a lot of the slaves uh, would um work in the field and then you know they need a lot of calorie intake to come back the uh amount of hard labor they have to do during the day but then so rich uh, uh food uh, food that is rich in calorie then becomes a sort of a tradition and then when you no longer have to do hard work but the food still continues to be the same it becomes a problem because you have more calorie intake than you actually uh uh, exercising and trying to work out and that becomes a problem and this is what happens to people in this country and another thing was that they said the historical food source of the Nauruans were fishing and gardening and the traditional Nauruan diet was primarily composed of marine food fruit root vegetables and coconut but then something changed the economic situation became a bit more difficult. Given that, they had more difficulties with income. Now, uh, people, it, it was just easier for them to go into the store and buy processed, ultra-processed food than just going to fish and then eating fruits and all these other things. And then it just became a major problem that it is going to be very hard to get people to lead a more active lifestyle move away from the sedentary lifestyle, go back to what they used to eat. And another thing, I've always wondered why um, ultra-processed food are always delicious. Have you noticed that? They are always absolutely delicious to eat. Okay, it w let's get some information about what we're talking about here when we're talking about ultra-processed uh, food. For example, Medical News Today, there's an article that they published and they said, well, the problem is not really about eating ultra-processed food. For example, you could have frozen already meals, apparently not very good. Baked goods, including pizza, cakes and pastries are not very good for you. Uh, packaged bread, processed uh, cheese products, breakfast cereals. For cereals are notoriously really bad, especially if you buy those cereals with added sugar and, uh, you know, it said added chocolate with all these f fancy colors. They are notoriously really, really high in calorie and sugar and apparently that is not good for you. Crackers and chips, not good. They're ultra processed candy and ice cream. Well, I think ice cream, no one needs to tell you that it's not good and, and candies or sweets. And then I was surprised to actually see in the list instant noodles and soups.
So those are uh, uh, because instant noodles. Well, you know, it has saved a lot of single college students from starvation when you are low on money, and that is you can get one for a, a little bucket for about one dollar or uh, one pound, and it's just so cheap. Then you have uh, ultra processed food like meat, sausages, nuggets, fish fingers, and processed ham. And then you have, okay, you know, fizzy drinks, sodas, uh, that a lot of people, it contains a lot of sugar. So I think that's well known. But I think uh, the other ones are very, uh, I'm very surprised they're on the list. Now, it says, what is wrong with those? Because when you think about it, uh, to make a pizza, it's the same process that you would probably use at home. And uh, But what's wrong with frozen pizzas? It says the problem here is that there is a difference between mechanical processing and chemical processing. Chemical processed food often only contains refined ingredients and artificial substances with little nutritional value. They tend to have uh, added chemical flavoring, agents, colors, and sweeteners. And you get the idea is that apparently the problem is that sometimes they have a higher concentration of sugar, uh, chemicals, and other things to make them, well, taste good. And they do taste good. And that is one of the problems. Two reasons why uh, I think ultra-processed food should be banned is, first of all, they're so cheap. Because if you're wondering why they're so cheap, apparently factories can produce processed food much more efficiently than farmers can grow fruits, vegetables, and this means that processed food is often more affordable for consumers than fresh whole food. And that's it. There isn't. It's just a, a, a matter of a matter of having to be able to uh, being able to produce it cheaper. And that's it. And so another thing, a lot of people are saying you should eat more healthy and then people are saying have you seen how much it costs to buy fruits and vegetables compared to just buying frozen pizzas and uh, do you know how much you, another interesting point is water if you buy water you, you notice that a bottle of water would probably cost a bit more than uh, a bottle of uh, uh, soda or freezer drinks which has more sugar content in it and it is designed to get you to eat and drink all these. You get addiction, you get this sugar rush, the cravings, and then, you know, you're hooked. That said, back to the story of people from the Republic of uh, Nauru. It says that, apart from the fact that um, they, 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 diabetes and health, or a lot of health problems because due to obesity is quite now rampant in there, it is very difficult because since the income is very low and uh, the land where they actually produce, the, 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 the island is quite small and they are unable to produce enough uh, food like they used to and, you know, fishing and all these other things and it just costs a bit more. So processed food that are imported are much cheaper and people tend to gravitate towards that. It is either that or you either go and put a lot of effort into the food you are uh, getting from the sea or you starve to death. And that, my friend, is a difficult problem to solve because how do you tell people with limited income to eat healthy when they cannot afford to do that? That's it. Should it still be banned? Um, okay, it, it, it's a two-way thing. You could ban processed food, and then what you discover is that a lot of poor people will die of starvation. Yeah, it's just that simple. And of course, you'll be healthier, but you'll be dead. <laughs> So, that is not a good thing. But in the article, uh, it mentioned that uh, the problem is not just eating uh, processed food, but it is also about lifestyle change. So, sometimes uh, people just need to get uh, to be more active and be less lazy. And if you've noticed that in 2024, in the world you live in, where you have access to the internet on your phone, 
you could use the internet sit do almost nothing all day use the internet to entertain yourself on your phone then use the same phone to order uh uber eats all these uh, uh food application and they would bring the the food to you and you just enjoy it so the incentive to actually go out walk from your house to, to at least to your car and then drive and get out and be active just is just reduced with uh, modern technology so it's going to be very hard for people to move away from that but that said i think ultra processed food should be banned but the alternative would be to make them a little less caloric so you eat it so you're not dying of starvation but they're not uh, it's not designed in a way to create a craving so um like for example uh, drinks fizzy drinks uh, or soda shouldn't uh, do not require that amount of sugar uh you could ban probably cereals make sure they don't contain that amount of sugar you get the idea uh, is that you reduce the uh, uh, amount of uh, sugar intake all the chemicals you have in it and then it would not taste as good as but uh, as uh, you know now but it was still it, it's an acquired taste you get used to it you have less sugar and people will be a bit healthier and then you also encourage people to lead a more active lifestyle so there you have it it's not an easy thing to uh, uh, uh an easy solution to implement because on one hand you have uh the capitalism people uh, uh creating food for income uh revenue and making a lot of money and on the other hand the government had has to deal with health issues of the population but then uh it's a win-win situation for the makers of these uh producers of this food because uh you you eat a lot of these you have health problems and you the, the amount of money you have will also be spent with big business where now you're spending your money on medication for obesity or uh diabetes or whatever it is uh it's not an easy thing to solve but there you have it 